Hello and welcome to MCA Services. This is our third video about measuring density and in this one we're going to show you how we measure the bulk density, also called the envelope density of a sample. And it's worth bearing in mind that the two terms bulk density and envelope density are quite often used completely interchangeably. In our first video we showed the difference between bulk density and absolute density and also the different techniques we use to measure them. Essentially the differences come down to the sample volume that's used in the calculation of density and for bulk density we measure the bulk displacement or envelope volume of the sample and this critically includes the volume of all open pores within the sample and this is shown in the diagram on the right hand side here. There are a few different techniques that can be used for measuring bulk density. And at MCA, we use our micromeritics auto pore mercury porosimeter. This is used to evacuate the sample held within a penetrometer and then backfill it with mercury. We do have three videos on our YouTube channel showing mercury porosimetry. So if you're not familiar with the technique, do have a quick look at them as these show sample being loaded into a penetrometer and how the instrument itself is used. So the sample we have used in the previous video, and we were using this one as well, is a 12 millimeter core cut from an autoclaved aerated concrete block. And this is a nice easy sample to start with. It's a single solid piece of material and it also has obvious porosity within it. For the measurement of bulk density, we want to include the volume of these pores in the calculation of the density. The first thing we do is to weigh the sample. We then load it to a penetrometer, and that's this glass bulb here with a stem attached to it. It's sealed with a metal cap at the top, and then a green ring to hold everything in place. The penetrometer has also been calibrated for its volume as well, so we know the volume of the empty penetrometer. It will now be loaded to the autopore. We will conduct a full low pressure analysis, which will involve evacuating that to a pressure below 50 microns mercury pressure, and then backfilling with mercury at a pressure of 0.1 PSIA. We'll actually complete a, a full low pressure analysis that's not really necessary because we only want to envelop the sample in mercury. However, it is useful because it allows us to inspect the intrusion profile. And that will make, let us make sure that the analysis is completed successfully and that we're also selecting an appropriate pressure at which to calculate the displacement volume and therefore displacement density. At the end of the low pressure analysis, the penetrometer is now filled with mercury and we'll weigh it again at this stage. The various masses, the sample mass, the mass of the assembled penetrometer without mercury, and again with mercury, are all entered into the autopore software, and the bulk density of the sample is calculated automatically. But we'll quickly run through the calculations that are applied. And bear in mind again that all of this is shown within our mercury porosimetry videos. The first thing to be calculated is the volume of mercury within the penetrometer. To do that, we subtract the mass of the assembled penetrometer without mercury from the mass of the assembled penetrometer with mercury. So that's the mass before low pressure analysis and after low pressure analysis. And that's divided by the density of mercury and we will use the density of mercury at the analysis temperature for that. So now we can calculate the bulk density of the sample. We divide the sample mass here by the displacement volume of the sample. And the displacement volume of the sample is calculated by subtracting the volume of mercury at the end of the low pressure analysis from the calibrated penetrometer volume. So essentially, it's just sample mass over sample volume. Ultimately, the autopore can be used to generate a report showing the bulk density of the sample here. And this has been calculated at 0.34 PSIA at a temperature of 22.86 degrees C.
So we can now look at the difference between the bulk density and the absolute density of this particular sample. There's really quite a big difference, and this is entirely due to the volume of porosity within that sample. Now these are two very different physical properties of the material, and it's quite often the case that when considering the density of a material, it's, it's quite a critical physical characteristic, and both of these values really should be taken into consideration. Mercury porosimetry is particularly useful for measuring the bulk displacement density of powder samples. In our first video on density, we showed that there were two displacement volumes that can be considered. The first includes the interparticulate void volumes, and that's shown on the left-hand side here. Conversely, the image on the right-hand side shows that these void volumes are not being considered. So the displacement volume is then that of the powder particles themselves. This image shows the mercury intrusion curve and pore size distribution plot resulting from the analysis of a silica powder sample. This analysis comprised both high and low pressure analyses, and we can see that there are two distinctly different regions of mercury intrusion. The first one here is due to the intrusion of mercury into the interparticular void spaces. There's then a region here of no intrusion before a second intrusion occurs here due to the intrusion of mercury into the intraparticular porosity. So that's porosity within the powder particles themselves. Because there's a good separation between the two, we can calculate bulk density in one of two places, here and here. The two density calculations are shown on this curve here. Now this curve is the cumulative mercury intrusion curve, this time plotted against pressure. The first bulk density is calculated at this blue line here. Now at this point, there's no mercury intrusion into the interparticulate void spaces, so their volume is included in the calculation of bulk density, and that gives us a density value of 0.819 grams per cubic centimetre. On the other hand, at this blue line here, the intrusion of mercury into the void spaces is complete, so their volume is not being considered in the calculation of bulk density, Density is now much higher, 1.530 grams per cubic centimetre, and that bulk density represents the displacement density of the powder particles themselves, including any porosity that is within them, but excluding the interparticulate void spaces. I hope that you've all found this interesting and useful, and thank you very much for watching.